Jazz Club. Hello and welcome to Big Wrist Watches. Today I'm going to talk about the brand's quality, which is still relatively unknown by a large part of the watch collecting population, especially compared to its big Swiss counterparts. In the past few years it has gained a little bit of popularity because of exposures on websites and in YouTube videos, such as the ones from TGV, who is an outspoken Squally fan. In 2017 I already had heard of the brand, but I didn't really pay it much attention. That is, until I went on vacation near Lake Garda in Italy and did some research on Italian brands while lying next to the pool. Let me explain, I have a tendency to bring home a souvenir in the form of a wristwatch. Since we were in Garda and were going to visit Milan anyway, I decided to buy a Squale 1521 right then and there, since their head offices were in Milan at that time. But more about that later. First, we're going to talk about the history of Squale. In the 1950s, Charles and Hélène von Buren founded their company Von Buren SA in Neuchâtel, Switzerland. They decided to start producing diving watches under the name of Squale, which is derived from the Italian word squalo, which means shark. As you may know, in those days, a watch was a diver's lifeline, as there were no sophisticated diving computers yet and dedicated diving watches were still up and coming back then. In 1959 they trademarked the name and obtained the first patent for a diving watch case. The first Squale watches contained unique features that seem ubiquitous today, such as the fluorescent orange minute hand. Squale watches from the 60s and 70s are considered to be icons in the history of underwater horology. These watches were the renowned Squale 1521, which we are going to discuss later on, the Squale 2002 and the Squale Master. In the 1960s, well-known Swiss-made brands started to commission Squale to produce diving watch cases. Blancpain, Doxa and Heuer commissioned Squale to produce cases for them until well into the 80s. The most famous result of these collaborations is the Blancpain Bund 50 Fathoms. The name is derived from the West German Navy Combat Divers Division, called the Bundeswehrkampfschwimmers. Meanwhile, Squale continued producing watches in its own name, and the brand reputation was confirmed multiple times by great athletes who wore these watches while achieving their records. For example, in 1967 Enzo Meorca achieved an immersion record using a Squale Master. In 1970, the famous diver Jacques Mayol, who was a personal friend of the Van Buren family, set a historic immersion record in Japan, reaching a depth of 76 meters while wearing a Squale watch on his wrist. Also in the 1970s, on the Italian island of Giglio in Tuscany, Squale was testing and improving the already high-performing Squale watch. It was there that the Von Buren family went diving on several occasions, including for recreational purposes, and where a close and sincere friendship developed between the Maggi and Von Buren families. The Maggi family was the Italian distributor of the Squale brand back then. This loyal friendship resulted in the transfer of the Von Buren brands to the Maggi family, after Von Buren's retirement. Since the 1980s, the Maggi family has independently managed the Squale brand, continuously increasing its recognition. In 1988, the Tiger was conceived. It was a serious diving watch with a water resistance of 300 meters, which was still considerable at the time. We will discuss the Tiger later on. Now fast forward to 2017. I mailed back and forth with Francesco, who was the sales manager at the time, while baking in the Italian sun. I arranged to come and get my 1521 Ocean Blue at the Milan headquarters a few days later. Now much to my surprise, they were located in a large apartment building on a back street somewhere. A place that seemed odd to me for a watch company at the time. Once I arrived in the office, however, I seemed to be teleported back into time. The whole office was painted in the classic Squale blue and they displayed vintage posters and ads everywhere. My reception couldn't have been nicer. Francesco came to greet me personally and I got to meet Massimo Maggi and also the old and very sweet mother Maggi. 
I received the 1521 from Massimo himself, of which I still have a picture and I can remember reveling in the beauty of it at an Italian restaurant afterwards. I couldn't have been happier with my purchase. Stupidly though, on my quest for the Holy Grail, I sacrificed my 1521 in my then end goal, yeah right, to acquire a Rolex. I still consider this to be the stupidest thing I've ever done in my watch collecting career. Now I bought a 1521 again last year, but it's just not the same as the one that I got from Massimo. I haven't stopped beating myself up about this. But anyway, water under the bridge, maybe Squally will hear this and invite me over once more. Who knows? The 1521 is really a gorgeous watch. It has that classic Von Buren case design, which is 42 millimeters in diameter, and the quality and finish is excellent. It wears smaller than its dimensions would lead you to believe, because of the recessed crown of the 4 o'clock position. Now, blue is my favorite color, and the hue and execution of the blue dial in Sunburst is spot on. The orange minute hand really pops on the bright blue, and the whole combination just clicks. The 1521 is powered by the automatic Swiss made ETA 2824-2 movement which has proven to be a workhorse movement over the many years it has been in production. A few months later, when I was looking to buy a Ploprov, I learned of the existence of the Squalid Tiger. It is sometimes called the Baby Ploprov, and rightly so, the Tiger clearly pays homage to the legendary Ploprov. That said, it has its own clear design identity and it doesn't copy anything from the Ploprov but its concept. In that sense that it also has a red pusher which needs to be pressed in in order to turn the bezel. The bottom side is also knurled for better grip on a diving suit and it looks best on the mesh bracelet just like the Ploprov. Unlike the Ploprov however, this watch is really thin and it wears much smaller on the wrist. Its 44mm diameter might suggest otherwise, but this watch can really be worn on a smaller wrist. Lug to lug, it measures 51mm, so it's taller than the Ploprov, yet it's a lot thinner and narrower. So if a Ploprov doesn't work on your wrist, definitely check out the Tiger. Getting a hold of one will be difficult though. Since the Tiger was released in a small batch in 1988 and then another small batch of just 200 in 2016 called the Final Edition. My Tiger is one of the latter and is made with old 80s components but with a new ETA 2892 movement. A few months ago I got the offer to buy one at a reasonable price and I bit the bullet regardless of the fact that I already own the Ploprov. As a Squally fan, it's really a great watch to have in the collection, even though I don't wear it that much. Now, as you get to know me through these videos, you'll learn that honesty is one of my core values. And one criticism I had for the brand is that I personally didn't really like the 30 Atmos, because it was so clearly a copy of the Submariner. For a watch company with such a great history and original designs, I found it sad to see that they had to resort to selling these so-called homages. Meanwhile, however, I saw that the official Squale website no longer mentioned this model range, so I must assume that they came to the same conclusion as well. Hats off to them for that. So, I think I have made clear in this video that I find it a true privilege to be able to own a Squale. It is still a relatively small brand and it's struggling to find its place in the watch market which is dominated by the Swiss greats on one side and the exponentially growing number of small micro brands on the other. Now if you are a history and diving watch buff such as I am then I can't think of a cheaper way to own a part of diving horology history than owning a Squally. That brings us to the end of another video. Thanks again for watching and if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.